Come here, come here. Closer, come here a little closer. A little closer than that. Did you know that Kodak makes a secret film? So what am I even talking about when it comes to a secret Kodak film? Well, I'm actually talking about this because this camera has been preloaded with an 800 ISO consumer grade 35 millimeter film. And Kodak normally doesn't actually sell an 800 ISO consumer film. Now, when it comes to Kodak's line of color negative films, there's only one 800 speed option, and that is Portrait 800, which is part of Kodak's professional line of films. And it's also pretty damn expensive. And that brings us back around to the disposable camera. Now I have nothing against disposable cameras. I think they're great. They're fun, easy to use, easy to shoot, and they're terrific to bring one or two to a party, let people take pictures on them, and then you get the roles developed and you have some nice pictures to hand out a few days later. However, the quality of a disposable camera does leave a lot to be desired, mostly stemming from their lens, which tends to be a plastic, somewhere around a 30 millimeter F dark lens. What I want to do is let this film stretch its legs out under some much higher quality lenses and glass. So I'm going to extract the film from this, load it in the F3 and see what we can do. And to do that, we need to go to the workbench. Right off the back. Man, it has legitimately been like 15 years since I've opened a disposable camera. Probably even longer. The last time I remember using one of these was when I was 15, which, yeah, was 15 years ago. So let's crack her open. Inside we have our classic disposable camera and <laughs> wow, the nostalgia is hitting me pretty hard right here. So in order to get the film out of a disposable camera without damaging it, we need to understand how these are actually loaded in the factory. And it looks something like this, where all of the film has been spooled out of the canister into sort of just a big pile of film. And as you take your pictures and wind the little thumb wind to the next frame, what you're actually doing is winding the film back into the 35 mil can. So why would you design your camera like this? Because it seems a little convoluted. Well, actually it makes the camera a lot simpler because you only have one winding mechanism, you know? You only need to wind the film back into the can instead of having to have some way of winding it out and then winding it back in when all the pictures are taken. And the second reason that this is really good is because if the camera breaks and lets in light, the canister will protect any pictures you've already taken. So if you take a picture on this section of film and then wind it along, it gets sucked back into the canister where it's protected from light. So if the camera gets damaged or dropped or broken, any pictures you've taken are automatically saved inside the can. In fact, there are actually a few cameras that work this way. I believe the Ricoh GR1, when you load the film into the camera, it will spool all the film out of the canister. And then as you take the shots, it spools your taken shots back in to protect them. And I actually think this is a really clever idea because it saves on mechanical complexity and it means your pictures aren't destroyed if the camera breaks. And let's face it, these cheap plastic cameras, they're gonna break every so often. So at least the pictures aren't going to be destroyed and people won't be unhappy. So now that we know that, in order to get the film out of this camera, we need to cover the lens up completely and make it light tight and then we need to take all the pictures one after the other with this camera. So we're essentially taking a bunch of blank frames. We'll open the bottom, extract the film, and we're good to go. Okay, so in order to block light while I'm taking these pictures to wind the film, I've got two pieces of cardboard here that I'm just going to seal over it. And I'm just gonna put a couple of layers of this electrical tape on as well. It's probably overkill. The cardboard will most likely block all the light, but I just wanna make sure. So lastly, I'm just going to cover the flash up with my changing bag just to make sure the flash doesn't you know, go off and blind the camera. So I'm just gonna turn off the light and start clicking through these photos. The good old feeling of chafing all the skin off your thumb, trying to desperately to wind to the next frame while 
something interesting is happening on your holidays. And that's the end of the roll. Let's get the lights back on. Okay, so after going through all that, I just discovered that the flash never actually fired because there's a button to turn it on and off. From what I know, I should just be able to pop this in here. There we go. And there is our 800 speed Kodak film. Now the only problem is the leader has been sucked into the can. So I'm going to use this leader extractor tool, one of the greatest tools ever, to pull the leader back out. Like so. And that's our roll of film ready. That is all she wrote. After going through all that hassle, how did the film fare? To be honest, it fared exactly as I expected it to. It, you know, shot and developed and the images look exactly like they came from an 800 speed consumer grade film. They've got nice sharpness, you know, some medium kind of contrast, fairly high saturation, and the grain of this just leaps clean out of the picture and slaps you across the side of the head. But even still, the grain wasn't actually as bad as I thought it would be. And that leads us to the final question of this video. Will I shoot this film again? And the simple answer is, of course not. This film is only available in disposable cameras, or possibly it's the same film that Lomography is selling as their color negative 800 speed however that's never been fully confirmed so the only way to guarantee i'm getting this film is to pull it out with disposable cameras and that's just stupid and very expensive you know one of those disposable cameras is more expensive than a roll of portrait 800 so i might as well just shoot portrait 800 or buy portrait 400 and push it a stop in development that's pretty much it my curiosity has been sated to see what this film can do but there's one last thing. I still have all of the disposable camera bits and it looks like this could be reloaded in theory. So maybe there's a future video in this. But apart from that, that's it for this video guys. See you next time. Oh.